you know, agents stay where they're at or they leave where they're at because of the leader there. You know, they stay with you because they think you're the leader that they can get them to the next level. Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Smart Agents Podcast. My name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. Today we are joined by Phil Duke Jr. out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. In just five short years, Phil has gone from just entering the real estate industry to now owning his own brokerage with 40 agents in multiple locations. Throughout our conversation, we talk about how he has been able to grow his business by developing a system that quickly trains and continually educates his new agents. Now, before we get into the day's featured interview, make sure you follow and subscribe to the show on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. You can find us on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Also, as you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Click the bell to get notifications for each new episode. And lastly, if you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story to share, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always looking for new stories to feature. If you could tell me a little bit about yourself, you know, what's your background uh, in real estate? Because most people don't, you know, come right out of school and get into real estate. Sure. Yeah. Well, I I got in real estate originally in 2006. Um, I was fortunate enough to just do well enough on the ACT to get a a two-year scholarship at our uh, community college here in Tuscaloosa, uh, Shelton State Community College. And the real estate uh, course was one of the electives. And so I went every Monday night. I took the course. It was interesting. And and I said, hey, this is my ticket to success, you know. And so I got in the business at a young age, you know, 19, about to be 20. Um, really, like most agents do that get in the business, didn't really treat it like a job, uh, didn't really, you know, respond well to coaching and and people trying to give me advice. And so, you know, about two years into it, ended up, you know, flunking out of the business. And uh, And at that point, I joined the military. Uh, which I'm still involved with today. Uh, you know, I still do my one weekend a month. Uh, but I joined the military to go back to school. I went back to school, finished my degree, uh, worked in a variety of, of sales roles there, uh, and, and really just kind of got uh, the, the itch to be an entrepreneur again. And so in 2015, uh, I started back in real estate part time, made the jump full time. And then in 2018, I started my own brokerage. Um, and then uh, a year ago, uh, January of 2020, I hopped out of production uh, 100% to start growing uh, my brokerage here. And, and I've also started a couple other locations uh, since then as well. So it, it's happened pretty fast, but it definitely was not, you know, always easy. And it was not an overnight success like, you know, some people might think it was just from looking from the outside in. So but it's been a fun ride and, and hopefully it's just getting started. Yeah. I mean, if you were to just look at that timeline it would look like, whoa, you know, it just blew up so fast for you, you know, getting back into it and then to where you're at now. But yeah, tell me a little bit about, you know, what were some of the mistakes that you feel like you made when you were, when you first started out and kind of had to bail on the business? Yeah. I mean, so the number one thing that most agents struggle with, it's not writing the contract. It's not uh, going out and learning how to show a house. It's that we don't consistently produce enough leads. Uh, you know, we, we, we find a lead and, and it sounds like somebody who's motivated and, and hey, I talked to so-and-so at the grocery store or so-and-so reached out to me on Facebook and, and we kind of hang on to that one lead and we ride it for several weeks, sometimes even several months, and then that lead doesn't work out, right? And we're like, oh, I spent two weeks waiting on this one to convert and it didn't. So I think, you know, the big difference from the first go around of being a real estate agent to the second go around is just really understanding what the name of the game was. Like the the agents who who have more leads, who go on more appointments, who, who take more listings and who get more buyer agency agreements signed, those are the agents that sell more houses. And I, I wish there was a way, and we might be coming up on that sometime in the future, there might be a way where we don't ever have to talk to people and we can sell houses. But for right now, that doesn't exist, you know? And so I think it really just came down to understanding that this is what the struggle is going to be. This is the number one problem that we've got to solve. And instead of trying to like run away from it or wish that that was not the problem we need to solve, let's just commit to getting good at that. So then it's, you know, how do I set appointments on the phone? Um, What do I say to get somebody to commit to come talk to me when they're six months away from buying a house? Like, why would somebody want to come do that when we're not even going to look at a house yet? Um, when you go on a listing appointment, knowing what to say, help uh, overcoming 
uh, objections. Um, you know, so really just came down to just a really more committed, uh, but also knowing like what the struggle was going to be and, you know, just kind of really just fully committing to figuring out how to overcome those problems. And if you do that, you know, really the game can start changing for you. And even with what I do today, it's still the same thing. It's, you know, now I'm I'm recruiting agents and I'm recruiting broker owners, you know, who, who, who want to partner together on new locations. It's the same game. It's generating leads. It's it's having a presentation. It's doing lead follow up. And so if you can become good at those things, you can really sell and be successful in just about anything, you know, in this business. So I, th- I think those are probably just the big things, just knowing what it was going to take and just committing to, to getting good at those few things. And and then you add little things here and there as you go. But the, you got to keep the basics, the basics in the beginning. Right. How much of that military background, you know, that that experience that you got in your time in the military, you know, that that structure of knowing you've got to practice, you know, it is, it's not, you're not going, you're not jumping right into something. It's the ingrained kind of repetition and the, the building that muscle memory. How did that translate over into what you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, the military is really good at just providing you structure and you, you actually, you know, the longer you're in it, the more you kind of appreciate that. You kind of know what to expect, you know, what your day is going to look like. Uh, you know, they don't really throw a whole lot of curves at you. It's kind of, it gets kind of repetitive to be honest with you. But as you do those things, you just figure out that because you're doing the same things over and over, you know, you get better and better at those things. Uh, so I do think that helped. I I do think also, you know, the military, um, whatever branch of service you've been in, they throw a lot at you. And at times you're like, how are we going to get all this done? But you figure out a way to do it and you just kind of do it one step at a time. So I think, you know, it just kind of gives you a little bit of confidence of like, hey, you know, compared comparatively, this real estate thing should be a whole lot simpler than than going out there and, you know, and, and training to be in the military. So so I think when you kind of look at it that way, I think we have just so many agents uh, in, in the industry right now who are looking for that easy way out. And and there is no secret pill or secret formula. You just got to like commit to being good at a couple of those basic things and just get a little bit better as you go. And and so I do think the military helped uh, in some ways with that. And, and then, as a, you know, what I'm doing today as a leader, you know, I, I'm not really producing anymore today. So just having a little bit of leadership experience, knowing how to uh, how to lead people effectively, knowing how to sometimes make tough decisions that aren't going to be popular. Uh, you know, I think all that stuff translated well when I was producing, you know, you get a bad home inspection. You got to be able to, you know, professionally tell the the seller that, hey, they said your roof needs to be replaced or your septic tank is not in good shape uh, on your buyer. You know, uh, hey, the underwriter said they're not going to be able to do your loan now, even though they told you they were going to you know, approve you. So I think it just comes down to just, you know, for me, more than anything, the military just kind of made me grow up a little bit more than anything. So. Right. And now, you know, kind of going back to you starting to, you know, when you started your own brokerage and kind of branched out to start building your own team, what was, I mean, what were some of the apprehensions or what was, you know, that's a big decision to jump away from, you know, the, I guess the little security blanket of having, you know, the backup of a brokerage or somebody behind you. What was that like mm-hmm. to jump, you know, out on your own? Yeah, well, you know, to me, uh, I was at a great brokerage. Um, you know, I, I still have a good relationship with that broker, and and it was a, a beneficial relationship for both of us to be there. But I kind of just felt like um, I didn't want to be just stuck being an agent the rest of my my career. And I knew I, I really didn't like uh, on the production side. I really didn't like you know, sitting at the dinner table and having to take a phone call from a buyer or a seller. I didn't like being on vacation and uh, and having to, you know, hey, sitting on the beach and you're talking about a real estate deal or writing an offer or something like that. So, you know, I'm a little bit of an introvert. I, I you know, I, I can turn it on when I need to, but I really would be okay if like, you know, you put me in a cubicle and was by myself and just said, hey, get this task done. I'll get it done. Um so for me, it really just was more about starting to grow a business. You know, I just really, as a real estate agent, I felt kind of stuck, uh, you know, made a good living, you know, uh, you know, was a good listing agent, um, you know, built up a, a good past client database. But really, as a producer, I just kind of felt stuck. And I didn't really fully know exactly how to get to that next level. But I knew if I just kept cranking out my next buyer, and my next seller, that that was not the answer. And if I started this brokerage, 
and I, I'm able to grow it to where I can jump out of production, then maybe I have a business at some point that can produce without me having to go out there and find my next buyer or seller. So for me, it was more about just like trying to get unstuck. You know, there's been several times in my career where I just felt stuck and I didn't really fully understand what I need to do exactly to get unstuck. But I just knew I was stuck and I didn't want to be stuck. So I knew I needed to go to that next level. And uh, and, and I didn't feel like I could do that as a producer, um, you know, so and I'm still not there. You know, I mean, in 2021, still, you know, and somewhat stuck in some ways, but a lot closer you know, than, than where I was a couple years ago. Right. So starting the brokerage, what were you looking for when you were bringing people onto your team? Yeah. So, uh, you know, for, for bringing on people, uh, you know, my goal initially was just to have a really small team, to have a handful of people who were all, you know, solid producers, you know, I mean, I don't care about if you're selling a hundred houses a year, but just people who had good moral, you know, integrity, um, character people um, who were professionals. Uh, and that's what we were in, in, in the very beginning. We, we, we were small. We had a handful of folks within those first six months or so. Um, and what I found was that as we started adding more and more people on, uh, as we got different, different, you know, personality styles, uh, different backgrounds, we had people coming in who had had almost no real estate experience at all. Um, you know, uh, had bought some houses maybe themselves, but really didn't fully understand the process. So then we kind of transitioned to, we need to make this system so good in the way that we train them, the way that we onboard them, the way that we start giving them leads, um, the presentations that we, we teach them to do. We need to now start transition to where it's less about finding the best people. And now let's create the best system so that we can plug anybody into this system. And so in the beginning, it was kind of, hey, come come join with me. I've been a top producer and you'll get to learn from me and blah, blah, blah. Today, I guess there probably still is some benefit uh, to, to, to coming here and, and having me as a leader. But now it's just more about the system. Like this is how fast we can get you trained. These are the things we do to get you trained. These are the lead sources that we'll plug you into once you've hit these milestones. Um, this is how we're going to you know monitor your progress, accountability throughout the week, throughout the month. And really, it's become more about the system more than anything. So, uh, but in the beginning, it was just about finding the right couple people. And for those who are thinking about making that jump from being a producer to being out of production, you've got to have a few of those high character, very professional agents who can start handling your buyers and sellers for you when you get ready to start making that transition. So that was key uh, to get started. You only need a couple of those people, two or three at the most. And now you can start adding other agents on. And, and what we found today is if we had one agent and they sell one house this year, we were profitable on that one deal. Now, we'd like if they sold 20 or 30, but even if they just sell one, you know, it covers our cost for bringing them in. It's one more deal we wouldn't have had. It's one more agent who may know other agents out there. So now it's really just become more about, you know, designing the system. And now we can just plug and play anybody into our system. And some of them take off. Some of them don't, you know, but, it, you know, uh, but how do we tweak the system to where we can make it to almost anybody can see that's really kind of what we're striving for today. Right. So when you talk about, you know, having this playbook for them to gather leads and, you know, your accountability, what was, I guess, kind of that, you know, what it, it's all coming from your past experience and the past experience of these other people. But did you guys, was it something you really sat down with and kind of drew out your playbook or is it something that is continually tweaked? Yeah, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Uh, we we, we use the, the acronym GITMO, you know, good enough to move on. So initially you just, you put something down and you say, this is what we're doing right now. And this is what we're going to move forward with. But you do certainly, uh, it is a constantly moving target that you're, you're chasing after. And as we bring on agents and we see that they're having, you know, problems with this, uh, whatever it may be. Um, for example, we were having a hard time with agents um, just setting appointments. We would, we would we're doing a great job with teaching them how to do the contract and the paperwork and the the contract to close and the uh, the buyer consultation listing presentation, but they were just kind of I don't even know what to say to even get in front of these people. Like I feel like I have a good presentation, but I'm not getting in front of enough people to do this presentation. So so I think you you do constantly tweak it, uh, but I think uh, you know the things that we're teaching agents today are things that we've proven that work for us. We just didn't do a good job of making sure that all of our agents knew, 
you know, how those things worked, why they worked. I, I would say that's probably a big thing too, is, it, you know, that, that I'm just kind of seeing in the industry is, is people today need more than just, hey, here's how you do it. They need to know why do we do it this way? Mm-hmm. And why do we strategically, you know, mention this in our presentation? you know, because we're setting ourselves up for future success. So it's a moving target. We're in the process right now of trying to revamp our onboarding and our new agent training just to try to make it even faster uh, for folks because we found just like taking a listing, you take a listing, you want to get it on the MLS and start showing it and getting buyers through it as fast as possible. When we onboard a new agent, we want to get them trained and onboarded and set up and out there working with buyer and seller leads as fast as possible. So we're trying to go from doing it in 14 days to trying to do it in seven days now. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and so, you know, I would say, yes, it's something you're always going to chase. It's never going to be perfect, um, you know, but it's got to be good enough to move on. And as you test the thing out and see it, you see little weaknesses in your system. And then you just go back to the drawing board. Hey, how do we fix this problem? And hey, let's try it again. You know, it's just, it's constantly tweaking and, for somebody like me who likes the behind the scenes stuff is actually pretty fun to kind of see how we can tweak little things, you know, like pulling levers here and turning knobs up here. And, and you know, how, what does this end up for us? Uh, and so it actually gets to be pretty fun. Right. And when, you know, we do the onboarding, what is your, what's your kind of follow up? What's your ongoing training process? Like how do you continually train these agents that are with your team? Yeah. So in the beginning, we kind of had this 14 day really in-depth, you know, process of training them how to do the contract and net sheets and Mm -hmm. and buyer presentations, all this kind of stuff. And then it was kind of like, well, hey, you're done with your 14 day stuff. Now, here's here's what we know. We have our Monday morning mastermind every Monday morning, you know, uh, come on there and and hop on our Facebook group group and ask questions. We found was uh, agents only retain a little bit of that initial training. Mm -hmm. So what's even more important is not just get them through that initial training fast, but reach out to them. You know, uh, we, when we have new agents who haven't closed three deals yet, we reach out to them every two weeks right now. So every two weeks we're talking to those folks and we're trying to find problems. And a lot of this, to be honest with you, a lot of it is not problems with, I don't know how to do this, or I don't know where to go to find this. A lot of it's like limiting beliefs that mm-hmm. they have about themselves um, so for us, uh, we are very hands on with all those agents until they've closed their first three transactions. So uh, so at least a phone call every other week just to kind of check in. We do our Monday morning mastermind here at the office where that's kind of where we want every, every uh, one of our agents to be in. And then on Thursday nights, I hop on and I do a webinar uh, called the PIP program, Personal Improvement Plan. And it's kind of more of a uh, here's here's what you need to be doing on a day in and day out. Here's some accountability. Uh, we'll, we'll post a little assignment that's due on Monday morning. Uh, so Monday morning, 11 a.m., those agents who have not closed at least one transaction a month, they're in that PIP program. And we provide that for accountability. Uh, you know, so what we're, what we're we've trying to go now is to make the onboarding process even faster because they were only retaining so much but try to do a better job of just being very hands-on with them until they've gotten those first two or three deals closed. If we can show them the right way to do those first two or three transactions, it's almost like on autopilot after that. But agents want somebody. I mean, they're begging for somebody to help them. Like you show me what I need to do and I'll do it. So we've just kind of taken that and run with it. And I think providing that structure and a checklist of these are the documents that's due and these are what day they're going to be due on according to your contract day and your, your, uh, your closing day. And they seem to actually do pretty well when you kind of give them what the playbook is that we're, we're looking for. And then it's just up to us as the leaders to reach out to them and make sure that they understand what's being expected of them, why we do it the way we do it. And, you know, their biggest learning uh, moments are from deal number one to deal number two. They get that first one done. They're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. And then they do their second one. They're like, oh, yeah, I remember that from my first one. So so now we're just trying to be a lot more hands on with them. Uh, whereas before we were kind of like, hey, here's your 14 day closing. Good luck. Uh, post it in the Facebook group if you need our help. Call me if you need my help. And we were finding the agents were just kind of struggling and they didn't really want to reach out for help because they thought maybe we were too busy or that their question was going to be dumb. So we've just tried to kind of reach out to them uh, instead of waiting for a problem to come up. We try to go out there and actively find out what they're what you know what they're struggling with at that moment. So, right. Well, I think that that just really it builds that that trust between 
you know, them to you, you know, they know that who, who they're putting their trust and their time, you know, in working with that you have their best interest in mind. And so that's just going to help reinforce that team atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, it comes back to, you know, recruiting and retention is all about that. You know, agents stay where they're at or they leave where they're at because of the leader there, you know, they stay with you because they think you're the leader that can get them to the next level. If you don't ever call them and you don't talk to them and you never help them to get to that next level, another broker in town calls them, and they go to one of their trainings. They're like, oh, man, this is way better than what we've got at our company. Now, all of a sudden, they found a leader that can get them to the next level. So uh, for us, it, it is it is about their success. It's also about re- retaining them. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's really hard for another broker in town to come in and sweep in and and be the new hero for them. If we are doing our job of staying in touch with them and showing them the right way of doing it. And we feel like we could almost plug and play anybody into our system and teach them the right way to do it. You know, ultimately, it comes down to their level of motivation on as far as how many deals they're going to do and all that kind of stuff. But we feel like if they do the things we ask them to do, we really can make anybody out there successful. And uh, and so we've just got to do a better job of making sure they are following the playbook that we already have. And, and I think that's probably the agent experience in, in the real estate industry right now uh, across the board is just not very good. We're kind of left to our own. Uh, you know, that's why people are going to starting teams. That's why people are starting brokerages because their broker is just not providing them, you know, the level of support, the level of leadership that they really are looking for and needing. And so we're just trying to fill that gap. Right. So going forward, as you continue to build this, you know, this team, what are your, I mean, what are your goals? Just keep going. You know, there's that a lot of time, you know, it's that, that ladder always is moving. You know, you grab one rung and it, it grabs a little bit higher. Is that kind of your mentality or what's your... Yeah, I mean, to, for us, it's all about developing leaders. You know, I mean, we, we want to take agents from being, you know, on our team to uh, we also have a 100% model where they can swap over to, to, to keep 100% of their commission and they can start growing their own team. And if that goes well, they can go out and develop their own their own office, their own brokerage if they want to. So so I don't know at what point we stop. I don't know at what point do we feel like we've done all we can do. You know, we're in kind of a small town market here. Uh, of only about 500 agents and only about 300 of them will actually sell something this year. So I don't know, you know, what that magic number is. We, we are in the process of right now of launching another office uh, in our same MLS area. One of our, you know, top producing agents has started a team and that team's grown enough that she feels like it's time to take that next step. So we're going to, you know, continue coaching and mentoring her. We don't, we don't see her as competition. You know, we're all in this thing together. We can all win. Um, so I think at some point, you know, maybe we do as good as we can do in our little town here. And so that's why, you know, uh, you know, I've got other locations going in, in, in other cities and other states right now as well. And so that's kind of something that we're looking to do as well. We feel like we can replicate this model in other cities and other states. And really the only thing holding us back from expanding that even further is just finding people who really do want to step out of production and really grow it. It's a, it's a tough step to go from being the top producer. You know, you might be the top producer in your office, the top producer on your team. And now all of a sudden you're not producing anything. It can be a big hit to the ego. It can be a slight hit to your, to your income while you're building that thing up. But you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Cause if you can get it to where it's 20 agents, 30 agents, 40 agents, whatever that number is for you, it really can be more, you know, uh, plug and play, uh, more scalable, um, and it can basically run without you if things go really well. So the bigger you go, the more help you can hire, uh, the more you can automate and delegate things. So, so that's kind of, kind of the 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 thing we're chasing today. I don't know when we get there. I don't know that we'll ever get there. Um, I feel like you're always either growing or you're you're going backwards. So I don't ever just want to get to a number and just say, hey, we're as good as we're ever going to get. Like. We can always grow to other cities, other states. We can start other offices. I mean, there's always a next challenge. And so that's part of our job as we go through this is figure out what what's that next thing we want to conquer. Right. Well, so I got to ask you, are you able to go to the beach without having the phone call, you know, <laughs> at seven um, o'clock at night? Somewhat. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we, we still, you know, I still have agents that, 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 that need our help. Um, I would say that calling them during the day um, cuts out on a lot of that. It's like when I was listing houses, uh, you know, one problem that I would have uh, or one problem that I encountered was I would go talk to folks that had listed their house with an agent previously. And that agent listed the house and never talked to them, never let them know what the feedback was. 
uh, you know, never let them know what they were doing to try to sell the house. And they're like, they listed my house. And six months later, I didn't even know what people were saying, what I could have done differently. And so we kind of instituted uh, and, you know, on Tuesdays, uh, we update all our seller clients and let them know, hey, how many showings did we have? What was the feedback on those showings? Here's what we did the last seven days to try to get your house sold. This is what we plan on doing the next seven days. This is how you're stacking up to other listings and this is your competition out there. And what I found was that if we would tell them, hey, every Tuesday you're going to hear from me, then if they had a showing at 5.30 p.m. on Friday, they weren't calling me at 6 p.m. wanting to know the feedback. They just had to wait till Tuesday. They knew I was busy. They knew I had a family. They knew I had a life outside of real estate. And so I think a lot of it is just kind of setting some parameters for yourself of like very, very few things that I need, you know, that they need to call me about is actually an emergency, you know. Uh, and we have a Facebook group with, uh, you know, over 50 people in there and six of them have broker's licenses. So it's not just me. It's really become more about the system. Uh, you know, I'm trying to not be the bottleneck of it, but yeah, you still do have some of that, especially if you've been recruiting somebody in and, and you kind of handled their onboarding, they, 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 I might be the only real estate person they know and that they feel like they can confide in. So you still do have some of that. Uh, but I would say it's greatly, greatly reduced, uh, because of the way that we're proactively reaching out to them during the day, during the work day, it really cuts down on that 7 PM call because you talk to them Tuesday morning at 10 AM. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a great tool that I think a lot of team leaders and broker owners are not doing. Um, you know, if, if you're constantly waiting on them, you know, it's, it can actually cause some anxiety if you're constantly waiting on that phone to ring, you know, but you can kind of take control of that by pro actually reaching out to them. And, and if they, if they need to call, honestly, today, if they need to call me, it's usually a five minute or less conversation. It's normally, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. Just wanted to run this by you real quick. I'm like, hey, I appreciate you calling me to check on that before you went ahead and got that contract signed. Right. Um, so, yeah. Well, I think it's awesome. You know, you, earlier you called yourself a uh, you self-called introvert, but really all these things that you're doing is so much communication on the front end that it's, you know, it's really kind of helping with all those, you know, in between calls and all that stuff. I just think it's awesome that you're doing all this front end work. Yeah, well, if you know if you set it up right, it you know you set your expectations. You know when they can call you and and how that's going to go and the best way for them to communicate with you. You know, uh, Chris Voss wrote about, wrote about that in his book, uh, Never Split the Difference. You know, he was a I can't remember if he was FBI or CIA. You know, head negotiator. Uh, you know, for hostage situations, and they would tell the families like, "Hey, your loved one has been kidnapped. We don't really know when this going to when this is going to end, but every two hours we're going to give you an update." And these families didn't know how long this was going to last. Is it going to last a few hours? Is it going to last a few days, a few weeks? But all they had to do was get through those next two hours. And good activity, no activity, bad activity, they were calling those folks. And so I kind of just used that when I was still in production. And now it's something that I'm doing even when I'm you know, out of production today. My, my clients now are my agents. Uh, and so instead of just waiting for them to call, which could be any time, any day, we just kind of take, you know, the reins of that and just we reach out to them and, and it drastically reduces them needing to reach out to us because we reach out to them. So well, just wrapping up, um, I always like to, you know, I like to ask people what was, you know, if there was one thing that you could go back and tell yourself when you were, you know, 19, 20, getting into it, what would that what would that one thing be to maybe, uh, you know, kind of help you out there? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing, um, you know, today is, uh, is is find you a mentor. You know, um, there's plenty of good coaches out there. I've certainly, you know, I, I've been with the same coach now for over five years. I've hired others for various reasons. You know, I've, I've gone to events just to learn about social media. And, and we've had people help us specifically with recruiting. And we've had people specifically help us with building a brokerage. And, and I've had a coach that helped me become a successful agent when I was an agent. Um, so there are people out there who have already done exactly what you're wanting to do, whether it's become a successful real estate agent, a broker owner. If you want to run a marathon, if you want to do a bodybuilding show, there's people out there that have already done it. And there's a whole lot of people out there claiming to know how to do it who hadn't actually done it. So find you somebody who's done exactly what you're wanting to do. Make sure they're doing it the way that you want to do it. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors out there, too, in the real estate industry, unfortunately. But do your due, dil due diligence, find out exactly what you need. You know, what's your problem you're looking to solve to get to the next level? Find somebody who's done that 
research them, vet them a little bit. And then if they're charging for coaching, hey, it would be well worth your money uh, just for the time and energy and and probably the money that you're going to save from trying to learn to do it the hard way. So you can level up so much faster if you learn from somebody who's already done exactly what you're wanting to do. So it took me a while to realize that, um, you know, but that's probably one of the number one things, you know, uh, we, we, I have coach today. Uh, my agents have me as a coach. They have other coaches that they, they, they reach out to and that they listen to. And there's never been more information out there at our fingertips on YouTube and on podcasts, like what you're doing. So just find you somebody that you can take, you know, uh, who will take that five minute phone call from you, who will, allow you to be in their Facebook group or who will do a weekly coaching call with you, you'll level up so much faster in just about anything you do. And that's probably, you know, the number one thing I would give to anybody who's out there trying to make this journey, whatever it is you're trying to do. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time with us today. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. Hopefully I was able to provide some value and, uh, and I I love contributing uh, and uh, I'm going to continue listening to the podcast as well. So you're doing a great thing out here and, and uh, hopefully somebody got some value out of it. I really want to thank Phil for taking the time to talk with us. And I can't wait to see where his business goes from here. And once again, if you think you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or a tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure you subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.